Hello Mayhem Makers, I am Mindy with Quilts and Mayhem and today I'm going to show you Summer Sampler 2022 Block 1. So if you haven't heard for the entire month of July, August, um, part of June, I believe into, even into September, we'll be doing this whole Summer Sampler. So every Friday a new block is going to be put out in the store. You can come by, pick it up and follow along each week and make a final sampler quilt by the time the summer is over. Uh, the downside for you guys is this is uh, pretty much for locals only. You do need to come into the shop to get the pattern. You can pick up prior week's patterns um, as we go along. We just don't release uh, future patterns. So it is to try to get you to come see us. We do love seeing you guys. So. Uh, if you're not local, not coming by uh, anytime soon, we do have it available as a pre-order just under Summer Sampler 2022. And then in September, uh, we will release it as a purchasable pattern that anybody can buy. But for right now, during the summer, come see us. We'll gladly give you patterns for free and you can follow along. My plan is to have each block have its own tutorial. So today is block one. We're starting out right out of the gate. I am doing this kind of beginner quilting friendly. It is a skill builder. So today we're starting with your basic nine patch block. And I just wanna go over some, some simple cutting instructions. So bear with me if you're an experienced quilter, just hang tight or, you know, it's a nine patch block, you know what you're doing. But I am gonna show some fussy cutting also. So just a few little tips for those of you who are maybe very beginner quilters, all right? so. Nice thing about a nine patch block is it's made of just squares. That's all it is. They're all the same size. So I'm going to adjust this just a little bit and show you uh, most of the squares you can do with a good old six and a half by 12 and a half or an eight and a half by 12 and a half. If you don't have one of these in your sewing room, please purchase one. Um, I've been using one of these for 28 years. Can't live without it. Uh, a few other rulers I do recommend having just in general that live by my machine and my cutting mat is uh, my four and a half by eight and a half. I do love this because a lot of my stuff is smaller, so it makes it easier to work with. <laughs> Say hi to Bentley. <laughs> Apparently he's stealing the show. And then this four and a half inch square because uh, a lot of my stuff is smaller. So I like having these smaller sizes just because the bigger ruler can start to be awkward, especially when working in a smaller space like this one. All right. So your basic fabrics, you're just going to cut strips and then cut out your squares. All right, so this piece is just a fat eighth. It's a smaller piece. It is uh, essentially nine and a half by 22. So it's not a full width of fabric, just so it's easier to work with. What I'm going to do is fold it in half and I'm gonna have the fold down near me. All right. And this is what's going to give me my straight line. So I'm going to line up a line on my ruler. It doesn't matter which one. I just like to pick the lowest so that my ruler fits all the way across. And I'm going to trim up this side. Okay, so that little bit, it's going to go bye-bye. I'm going to turn it around, try to make sure it doesn't shift. And then whatever size squares I need, that's the strip I'm going to cut. I don't do like single squares out of fabric. That just drives me mental. I know there's people that do it. And it may save you fabric. I just, it's one of those things I can't do. So I'm just going to cut a full strip, put my excess at the side. All right. So now I have a strip the size I need. Now, because I'm in a smaller space, I'm going to ditch this ruler because it's just really big. I'm going to go to my little baby four and a half. So then what ends up happening is I'm going to clean off this edge. Good morning, Curtis. Welcome. Uh, you don't want that selvage. I don't know how many quilts I see that you guys are leaving this selvage in here. Please don't. It's not a nice smooth piece of cotton. It's got holes in it and all that. Um, so please trim that off. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna chop that ickiness. So that piece, please stop putting it in your quilt. Just please. All right, and then I'm gonna turn around. So now I have essentially three straight edges and then line up my ruler so that I have a bottom line and the side line where I need it to be. So right now I'm doing three and a half inch squares. So I have the three and a half mark of my ruler here and down here. And then I'm gonna cut however many squares I need. Since it's a demo, 
that's all I need. All right, so that's basic cutting. When you're trying to do it with a larger piece of fabric, please make sure you're lining up your beginning and ending edges. So we'll pretend this is like a full width. You want to take this edge, take it to this edge, which would, we're going to pretend is the other selvage side. What I do is I kind of shift it so I don't have any twists down here. Because if you have a twist down here, your strip is actually not going to be straight. So I please beg you, make sure you're trying to line that up so your fold is nice and straight. But we're not having to do that, thankfully, because we're working in smaller pieces. Now, fussy cutting. Let's see if we can help you see. So you don't need to see me. There's a fun print on here. And I want to feature one of these prints. So, and I have another tutorial on YouTube that goes probably into better detail about fussy cutting. Um, this is just for you guys for this block because the center block I did do this print fussy cut. So, uh, figure out what size you're doing. So today we're working in three and a half. So I'm going to make sure that I have my three and a half portion of this little square in my view. All right. And then I'm going to essentially decide what's going to be the center. So I'm going to take three and a half, divide it in half, so one and three quarters, um, and try to make sure that that center mark of this ruler is pretty much over the center of the design I want to be in the middle of my square. Now, if you're new to this, I would mark it out first. So I'm going to use this as uh, a chalk marker because I'm working in a darker fabric, um, and I want to be able to see it. I love this thing. I've had it since the dawn of time. Okay, so I'm marking one corner, and then I'm going to turn it around, line up the three and a half with this corner, and then chalk out the rest of it. Nice thing with chalk is you can kind of brush it out. It's fairly easy. Put on, it comes in different colors. I just happen to have a white one. All right, so then, I don't know if you can see it. It may be too light for you guys. There we go. So I can see. That way I know before I cut anything, is it centered? Is it where I like it? Now's the time that I can brush this out and shift it if I need be, all those kinds of things. So if I go, hmm, yeah, I really didn't like that, I can do over. Otherwise, if you're just going bold, you have faith in what you're doing, um, you can just use your rotary cutter and just go straight at it you are going to have to cut it out eventually. Uh, so I'm going to shift a little bit and I may actually come down a little more. Keep in mind though, quarter inch around every side of the square is going to be in your seam. So whatever is in this quarter inch is going to go away. So don't have an important piece in that quarter inch or like this design I'll show you. I'm trying to make sure that this flower is actually also in here. So I'll show you why it's important to keep that quarter. Otherwise, I'm just going to cut off some pieces. So this is my first corner that I've got trimmed. And then I'm going to turn it around and line up my three and a half. I'll show you what it looks like. All right. There we go. Now, I decided I dropped down, so I could keep this flower in here along with this little eye with the laurel wreath. But notice, if I had not made sure that this was up high enough, this bottom piece potentially would be pulled into the block. We don't want that, okay? The rest of the block, pretty simple. That's why I started out beginner-friendly. This is pretty much the block I teach everybody uh, when they first start because it's just... Easy peasy, right? Oh, except for, <laughs> I measured wrong. It's supposed to be four and a half, you know. It's early, that's okay. Thankfully I can cut this out. This is a four and a half inch square. So I just have to make sure it's in this square and I can do it again. And this is a scrap piece of fabric, so I'm not feeling quite as wasteful. There we go. Always happens on live. I always, there's something. It just goes not quite as I hoped. All right, there we go. Four and a half. Flowers got room. These flowers are pretty much centered. 
these guys. Now I'm going to lose a little bit of this top. It's okay. I'm not that picky about it. So nice thing, nine patches. So you're going to work across in what's called a row, and then you're going to put your rows together. So you end up laying out all your squares, how they look on the picture, and you're going to sew them together like this. I'll show you. Now, key things to remember. This is my center block. This is one side of it. So we're going to match two corners and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Always a quarter inch seam or what we call a scant seam, just a little bit smaller. Just to make sure everything fits. All right, so you're just going to match those raw edges. You want to make sure the beginning and the ending match. The things are going to go crazy. They're just, it's going to get waffly. It'll drive you just nuts. So please, bare minimum, make sure those sides match. And then I'm just going to take it in my machine here. Now, those of you that are new, and then go press, do one at a time, take it nice and easy. Okay, so I'm going to take this and show you. I'll tilt you this way. Oops, there's my sewing and my pressing station. I try to keep everything nice and close uh, so I don't have to go far. All right, so what I'm going to do, this is one of my personal tricks. Take my spray. So this is a mix of water, best press, and flatter thirds. All right. And I love this guy because it just is an easy little mist. And I'm actually going to set my iron on that seam. It's called setting the seam. Okay. And what it's doing is making sure those fibers, they're going to tighten up and they're going to lock in. And it just gives you a stronger join between your two fabrics. And then I always press open. When I first started, I was taught to press to the dark side. Works great. Really good for trying to match up seams, those kinds of things. So if that is what you want to do, um, or if you're new, feel free, try multiple ways and see what you like. You may not like opening your seams, okay? So we have two, and then because this guy is gonna be in the middle, I'm gonna match up on the opposite side and add this to make this row. So these rows are just three squares across and then three down. I have a tic-tac-toe board, all right? We're just going to do the same thing, that quarter inch seam. Now, if you find out when you put your squares together and you measure it across, make sure that your block is the width that it's supposed to be. If it's coming out too short, that's when you do that scant seam I was talking about, where you're pretty much just going to make sure that your seam allowance from where the thread is to the edge of the fabric. So this part is not quite quarter, a little bit less. Skosh, it's kind of like baking. You know when they say a smidge of something um, and it's not a real measurement? That's <laughs> kind of how seams are, you know? It's just, it's just a skosh smaller than a quarter. Um, so for those of you that need exact numbers, I'm sorry. Uh, there is no real exact measurement to scant. It's just a little, little bit smaller. And then that way, your blocks will potentially be as wide as you need them to be, right? So here's another row. This is our middle row. So we have top row, middle row, all right? So then what you do is you put them right sides together and please pin where these join. Please, please, please. Unless you're very experienced and can you know how to match them as you go, those kinds of things successfully, um, then you can ignore me. If you're a beginner, please, please do this habit. Pin right where these join. Match those lines up. Just put a pin right where it matches and make sure your beginning and your end line up. If you're worried about them shifting, pin here too. All the pins. This is why they come in a very large pack. Get lots of them. Okay. Your beginner, please adjust, match these corners, pin, 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 pin. I'm thankful my instructor when I started quilting taught me all these really good habits. They seem obnoxious, um, but it's what makes me successful in my quilting. All right, so then you just start the first couple stitches, take the pin out, do not sew over it, okay, and then sew. I'm stopping where the next pin is, pulling that 
guy out. We're just doing quarter inch seam. It doesn't change. You rarely in quilting ever change your seam allowance unless you start doing bag making, garment making, those kinds of things. They generally like big chunky seams. All right. So otherwise we're just going to get a good quarter or stamp quarter cut. I'm going to press. All right, and then we're going to put the bottom row on. And here at my pressing station, I do have a wool mat that is under here. I like it because it holds that heat a little longer. So it helps make everything flat. And I do use steam. You probably can hear it. Um, I love steam. I just feel like I have way better success um if I stand. So get a nice good press. Alright, so we have one and two joined. Alright, we're two thirds of the way there. Now we're gonna take a row three. Alright. We're gonna flip it up, right sides together, match these seams. Alright. And do the same thing. Trim that thread. I trim a lot of threads. Please trim your threads. My long armors will love you way more if you trim your threads. I've seen a lot of quilts where all the stray threads are in there. I don't, I don't know how it survives. Um, I always seem to find if I leave all these loose threads, they seem to get caught up and tangled in one another and wrapped around my machine feet and all that. So please, please trim. Um, especially if you're going to have somebody else quilt your quilt. You're just going to have a lot cleaner <coughs> quilt in the end. You're not going to have all those threads kind of bunching up underneath, inside, and all of that. So... Oh, maybe that was just another good habit I was taught in the beginning that I just all these threads just have snips nearby, make them go away. All right. I'm gonna press that seam and then we're gonna press it open. Now you don't want to like grind on it or you know like do a really aggressive pressing where you're trying to push the fabric unless that blocks turn out a little too short um, you want to be pretty light-handed on your pressing because the more aggressive that you actually like push and shove that fabric you're going to actually warp it all right so we don't want that we don't want warped blocks we want nice even square blocks right isn't that pretty so, there's block one. Make sure you always measure it. If it's a little too big, you can kind of just trim it up. Just make sure you keep it centered when you trim. Anytime you trim a block, don't just like line up one corner and only trim two sides because then the top side's gonna be shorter than the bottom side. Always trim evenly. So try to center your square um, in the middle and trim all the way around so that it is a little more even when you're trimming any excess off. But hopefully this is just gonna measure up right where it needs to be nice and pretty and that's week one you'll see me again for week two soon because the next pattern will release this friday and uh, we'll just kind of keep having videos going for you guys to follow along hope you have a lovely monday and keep on stitching